Okay, what are you trying to pull now? Why, Maggie, what a pleasant surprise. Tom, what's going on? You, know, you look quite a, sort of out of sorts. Uh, something to do with the trial. I have been told that your client can't testify today. Why not? What's the matter with her? Well, uh, she sort of had a rough week. I explained the situation to Judge Flannery. I assume you had her checked into a hospital. Uh, no. Oh, I see. She's well enough to stay home. She just can't appear in court today. Is that it? Yes, that's the situation. Or maybe you're afraid to have her on the witness stand again. <laughs> Tom, you know, if you don't show cause, I can get a court order forcing her to testify. Oh, what's the point? You'll have in a day or two. I want her now, before she has a year and a half to rehearse her responses to my questions. Maggie, she needs a respite. There are reasons. You'll have your chance. Tom Hughes, you are up to something, and I am not leaving until I find out what it is. So let's have it. She should have a drop in temperature within two hours. If not, we'll increase the dosage to 10 milligrams. All right. I'll take another look at her before I leave the hospital, and we'll reevaluate the medication. Is there anything else? No, that's it. Okay. It's really weird out there. The sky is pitch black. It's calm before the storm, I guess, huh? The weather report said snow. Snow, huh? Huh? Snow would be nice. I think it's going to sleet. I'm on my way to Hawaii. <laughs> we need you here, Dr. Ward. Miss Wilson is uh, doing much better. I think we can probably release her in a couple of days. Well, that's good news. You know, I can't help but notice that when I... Join your little group of great silence descends. Leads me to believe that perhaps you're talking about me, about the trial, eh? The trial will be over pretty soon. I must confess, with each day, I feel a little bit more confident that uh, I will be acquitted. What do you think? I'm glad you're all in agreement. We'd all like to see justice done, John. Justice done. I'm sure you would. Of course, our ideas of justice may differ. For instance, you probably think it just if I were to lose my job and go to prison. Where are you going, Miss Montgomery? I have some work. Now, there's something I wanted to say. Why don't you stay? When this trial is over, I think I find it very difficult to forget my friends and colleagues around here who presumed that I was guilty. I think I find it very difficult indeed. Oh my God, D, honey. What's the matter? What? What happened? Here, let me. Put this on. What happened? What happened, sweetheart? John. John, what? He got into the apartment. He got into the apartment. How did he get in? I don't know. I was asleep, Daddy. I was asleep. I didn't want what? it to happen. I tried to what? stop. Did, honey, did he rape you? Is that what happened? Did he rape you? I was really terrified. I was. I was really very much afraid of him. I. I wanted to make him stop, but. But he, he kept on and on, and, and he, he, he forced me. You say he forced you? Did you try to defend yourself? Yes, I did. How? I... I tried to push him away from me, but he was stronger than, than I am. Did you scream? I want... Did yeah, you cry out for help? No, I didn't, but I wanted to. I tried to. I, I, I couldn't make a sound. I just couldn't make a sound. My, my throat just closed. I, I thought he... I, I really thought... What, what did you think? I thought he was really going to hurt me. You were afraid for your life? Yes. And then he raped you? Sorry, once more, I have to ask the witness to speak up. The jury can't hear you. Yes, he raped me. Well, 
like it. I worry about that too. If John wins and he he's free, I I get frightened about what he might do. So trusting, so innocent. Only I could have protected you from him. I tried, but I failed. He's hurt you so badly. This portion brought to you today by Ivory. There's a pure, natural kind of clean when you lather up with Ivory. And by Folgers Crystals, the delicious coffee that tastes as rich as it looks. Why, oh, yes, you wouldn't uh, want us to break in, would you, Margaret? Oh, what do you think? How do you like? <laughs> it's beautiful. Oh. Oh. And you can see the pasture and the, the stables. James, look. Yeah. Very nice. Would you like to see upstairs? What's upstairs? The bedrooms, I assume. I was wondering why you wanted to show me this place. Now I know. I don't think you understand. How long is your friend going to be away? How long do we get to use this place? You don't understand. Sure I do. Nell's got tired of us using his apartment. Darling, I don't like the arrangement we've had any better than you. I want to make you happy. And you do, James. You do. I want to buy this house for you. You're kidding. Oh, the house is for sale. I want to buy it for you. And that is, if, if you like it. If I like it? 
Yeah. <laughs> oh. I mean, I want a place that is ours. A place where you'll be happy. the second floor. I just thought you ought to know that David Stewart suddenly left town. Well, that's his business. It's a lousy excuse for delaying the trial. <laughs> well, it upset Dee very much. I mean, she is close to her father, you know. Well, then maybe you should have stayed. Oh, come on, Tom. Don't try and soften me up. I'm not it's asking not for It's not my you. fault that I'm, he left. I'm not asking for your sympathy. No? Listen, this trial has been hell on the Stewarts. I mean, you don't even know these people. All you know is what John Dixon has told you about. My job is to worry about Dixon, not the Stewarts. Well, I'll tell you. David and Ellen have been crushed by this. What is it, Tom? Do you want me in tears? Did you know that... Dee's sister, Annie, was pregnant. So? So? So you're upsetting her at a very bad time. Well, maybe you ought to tell her not to come and watch the trial every day. Come on. You know why she's there? She's there for Dee's sake. Listen, all I'm saying is that I hope there are limits to what you'll do to discredit Dee. I mean, I know you want to. So he's a human being. You could ruin her whole life. I'm not going to help her keep her little secret, if that's what you mean. There are things in her life that have nothing to do with this trial. You have no ethical justification to use. No? I think the jury has a right to know what kind of a person she is. Yes? Carol Stallings and Stephen Andropoulos are here to see you. Ask him to wait. I'll be out in a minute. Well, you're busy. I'll see you later. Maggie, wait. Listen. Why are you putting Dee on the stand again? What are you going to ask? You'll find that out in court, Tom. Do you have any idea how much this is going to hurt her? Oh, Tom, I am not trying to hurt her. You know I'm not a vicious person. But on the other hand, I can't help it if the truth hurts her. You know, that lady has got a lot of secrets. Maggie, there are things in her life that were beyond her control. All right, then nobody will blame her for them, will they? But come on, Tom, she is trying to send my client to jail. Oh, man. And it's my job to make sure he doesn't go there. That's what he's paying me for, and that's what I've got to do. I don't like it any better than you do if people get hurt. And I think it's real nice of you to try and make me feel guilty okay, about it. Okay, hold, wait. Annie Hollister has nothing to do with this trial. You could destroy her, too. What could I possibly ask Dee that would hurt her sister? You know what we're talking about. Oh, boy, you play it real humane when you're losing, don't you? But I know you'd sell your soul to win this case. And so would I, love. So if you'll just let me be on my way. Maggie. Jer listen, would you stop this? If you do not want Dee on that stand, you go to the district attorney and you get him to drop the charges against John. That's your option. But I don't want you coming to me and loading all this guilt on me and begging for mercy again, okay? Nice talking to you. Yeah. Yeah, send uh, Carol Stallings and Mr. Andropoulos in, please. Sorry to bother you. I know you're in the middle well, of a trial and everything. Well, that's all right. Hi, Steve. What's the problem? Well, Steve will tell you, and I, I told him that I, I thought you could help him. Okay. What is it? Um... It's the, uh, the green fire necklace. I took it. I stole it. I don't get it. What, is the judge on their side or something? No, of course not. Well, why would he grant a postponement? Well, it's just for a day. 
Why does he even do that? He stops us cold. Okay, look, John, I don't like it either. What do you think Tom Hughes is up to? I don't know. I couldn't find out. But I can tell you what he told the judge. Well, I would like to hear. Yes, what did he say? What'd well, he say? apparently he gave him some song and dance about the emotional strain that Dee has been under lately. Long hours of testifying, oh. et cetera, et cetera. Well, there is a great deal of truth in that. This has been rough on her. I know that. I know that. Tom also made a big deal about how hard her father's leaving has been on her. Leaving David's left? He's left town? Apparently so. Why? I don't know. They say it's a business trip, but the rumor has it that he's going to miss the rest of the trial. He wouldn't take off on a business trip now. Well, what do you think he's doing? Taking a vacation? I don't know what he's doing. Perhaps you ought to check it out. It might have something to do with the trial. Anything's possible. You sure you don't know? Why would I know? You think the man confides in me? Just asked. I just think it's very strange. He's been sitting there all this time right next to Dee, egging her on. I know. And all of a sudden he leaves. You know, I think he's afraid we're winning and it's just too hard for him to take. You say? Mm -hmm. <laughs> maybe, maybe. But if it makes Dee a little less self-confident, it's okay with me. You really enjoy hurting her that much? John, I don't enjoy hurting her. She's attacked you and I'm doing my job, that's all. Mm. I don't know. I just get upset by the postponement. I get some momentum going. We stop. I think it hurts us. Well, we'll still be all right. Anyway, there's no sense in moaning about things that you can't help. Besides that, we can use this delay to our advantage. Mm. I want you to search your mind and make sure that there's nothing that you haven't told me. I don't want any more surprises. I've told you everything. I hope so. All you want is more ammunition so you can attack my wife. Listen, John, I'm going to say this one more time. I do not like doing what I have to do to your wife. And I mean that. But you did say that you want to stay out of jail, didn't you? Yes, you make your point. All right, I'll see you later. telling the truth. Maybe she didn't take the gun. David saw it. Maybe he took it. Maybe David has the gun. Tom. Margo. Hi. Hi. What are you doing here? Well, I, I came to see my father. Why aren't you in the courtroom? Oh, there's been a postponement. Why? I asked for it. Dee can't testify today. She's not up to it. She all right? Well, it's been rough for her, and she's also upset about her father. He left town. Now? Well, she said he had business. Huh. He had to. Well, when will the trial start again? Tomorrow. How do you think it stands? Well, it depends on the jury. I don't even want to guess about it. He used to be much more optimistic. Yeah. Uh, you think Dee will be all right by tomorrow? Uh, I don't know. Well, how, how much more can they do to her? I mean, they've used everything they've got. Wish that were true. Listen, i got to go down and see Carol downstairs, okay? I'll see you later. Good luck, Tom. You hear that? Some of it. I don't know what he meant about D. I mean, what else can they do to her? What have you been? Out. Doing what? None of your business, mother. 
As long as you're a student nurse here, it is. You know, if you think you can just ignore if the I rules... If I get myself in trouble, I will handle it. Don't worry. I do worry. I'm concerned about you. Yeah, well, I'm fine. Save your sympathy for D. She has it. Such a bummer. I mean, he could get off scot-free, and she's getting raked over the coals. And she doesn't exactly have a lot to thank you for, Mother. I know. And, uh, well, I'll let you know, you know what I hear from Tom. Okay. Did the right thing, Steve? I guess. Steve, I'm glad you're here. I got some news for you. Oh. Yeah, what? I have located a Mr. Triandos. Now, he is the son of the man who originally owned the Green Fire necklace. Right. His father has since died, and he has since moved to America. Now, I told him you're ready to come forward with it. Uh, he, <laughs> he was surprised. He didn't think he'd ever see it again. Was he going to the police? He doesn't know whether to press charges or not. He wants to think about it. But you told him Steve came forward voluntarily. Yeah, I did what I could, Carol. Well, look, uh, however it turns out, I, uh, I appreciate the help. Yeah, okay. Now, listen, he's going to get back to me. I'll, I'll tell you when he calls, okay? Yeah, thanks. Well, i got to get back to work. Bye. Okay, bye. So, give you a call. Yeah. Well, it is not often that a guy lifts a necklace that valuable and brings it back. Well, I just hope the person who owns it remembers that. I'll do my best. I know you will. I'm glad he brought it back. Do you have something to do with it? Mm. Mm. Something. Do yeah. you care about him? Yeah, I'm worried about him. I think it's more than that. Mm. Maybe. portion of As the World Turns has been brought to you today by Gleam, the toothpaste made for adults. It fights cavities and adult bad breath. And by Tide, women who count on cleaning put their trust in Tide. We'll continue with part two of As the World Turns in just a moment. And now part two of As the World Turns. Well, listen, I'm glad you called. I talked to Tom after you left, and he thinks that there's a chance that it could work out. Well, look, uh, even if it doesn't, I'm just, I'm just glad it's over. You know, you, uh, you sound different. Yeah, well, I feel different. It's, uh, oh, it's like a 10-ton uh, weight, you know, it's been lifted off my back. Anyway, I mean, if you can believe it, I feel like celebrating. So, uh, listen, uh, can I take you out tonight? I'd love it. I'll just have to get a babysitter. Oh, you think you can? Yeah, I think so. Good. Uh, all right, what is your favorite restaurant? <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. The Placa? No, 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 wait, no, no. I don't feel like taking you to the Placa tonight. I'm going to take you to a real fancy place. We're going to uh, go dancing, we're going to have champagne, uh, whatever you want. Are you sure you want to do that? Look, uh, you know, we may not have that many nights left, so I figure we better live it up while we can, right? Maybe things will work out, Steve. You know, maybe this will be the, the beginning of a whole new life for you. Well, yeah, maybe. So, uh, when do you want to come by? Uh, well, when do you want me to come by? <laughs> well, after work, I've got to pick up something that they're holding for me over at, um... Raquel's Boutique. That's over at Simpson Square, so... Right. Uh, well, then why don't I call you, say, uh, around 7? Great. And, uh... Oh, hey, you better, uh, better get some galoshes, too. It looks like it's gonna be pretty wet tonight. <laughs> yes, I know. And, um... Carol, I just, uh... 
Well, thanks again. I just, I just can't tell you how I feel. I think I know. I, I know it's right. You know, whatever happens, I just know it's right. Steve, I'm so glad for you. Yeah. Well, I'll call you. Okay. Bye, Steve. Bye. I want to buy the house exactly as it is. Furniture, paintings, bedding, everything. Well, I don't know what the owners will say. It is rather unusual. Yes, but I'm making them a very generous offer. I think if they're interested in money, they'll accept. Well, I don't know if it's the uh, best time for uh, any kind of an offer. The cash flow problem still continues to be fairly critical. Now, as I told you, that problem is on its way to being solved. In a short time, I'll be able to afford this place and a hundred other ones like it. Well, then I will submit the offer immediately. Yes, good. Oh, Nels. Yes, sir. Uh, my name is not to be mentioned in any of the negotiations to the owner of the real estate agent. It's to remain strictly confidential, including Mrs. Stenbeck. She's not to know either. Of course, sir. Good, huh? Yeah, you're doing real well. We're going to have to let you out of this place, I think. Really? Yeah, your tests come back. They're very encouraging. Well, how soon do you think I can go back to my classes? Oh, I don't know. A couple of weeks, I think. Look, why don't we sit down here for a minute? You don't want to overdo this yeah. thing, okay? I can't believe I'm so tired from just that little bit of walking. Well, you know, you spend a lot of time in bed and you lose your strength. <sighs> hmm. So, I guess you are. You must be very anxious to get back to school, back to your classes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I tell you, I think you've been through a rather rough time. I miss Daddy very much. I'm sure you do. Never met him. But I'm, he'd have to be proud of you, the way you pulled through it all. Well... He always wanted me to be strong. Uh, Since my mother's not living, he knew that I'd be alone someday. Yeah. I just didn't think it'd be this soon. Well, you ever find out how the accident happened? He was uh, excavating a tomb in the Valley of the Kings that's near Luxor in Egypt. And the roof of the tomb collapsed with... My father inside. I see. He was always so careful. I'm sure he was. Dr. Dixon. Yes? Dr. Selby's on the phone. Do you want to speak to him? Oh, yes, yes, I'd better. Uh, I wonder, could you, uh, well, could you take Miss Haley back to her room? It's time for a medication. Could you do that? Whatever you say, doctor. Good. I'll, I'll see you later. Shall we go to it? He's been a real help to me. He should. It's his job. I, uh, I've been reading about his trial. The papers say that you just found out he's your father. Well, live and learn, right? Have you talked to him about it? Are you feeling strong enough to walk back to your room by yourself, or do you want me to get a wheelchair for you? Uh, no, I, I can walk. Uh, Margo. Maybe you know, uh, my father just died. Yes. I'm just sorry that you and Dr. Dixon don't get along. Maybe it's worth trying to change that. I mean, no matter how you feel about him, he is your father. I am hoping that with a little bit of work, I'll be able to forget that little fact of life. Do you really feel that way? Yes, I do. And I would appreciate it if we didn't talk about her anymore. Margo, I know what he's been accused of. I just can't believe that he's guilty. Look, I know that he's going through a terribly difficult time in his life right now. But even so, he has been so good to me. Wonderful, really. And I, I'm always going to be grateful to him for that. 
You'll only have one father. I know that David meant to bring this in before he left. I found it on his desk. I'll see the Dr. Simon gets it. Thank you, Bob. I suppose David's in Chicago by now. I guess so. Bob, I don't know why he went, but I'm sure it wasn't on business. David would never leave us at a time like this on a business trip. He's been under a terrible strain, Ellen. The whole family has. Bob, we need him so much now, especially Dee. Well, if you don't think this was a business trip, do you think it had something to do with the trial? I don't know. All I know is he was under a terrible strain. He, he, he's not himself. He hasn't been eating. He hasn't been sleeping. I'm just so afraid he's going to become ill. And... All right, Ellen. All right. I'm sorry. Now, he's going to be fine. You're the one I'm worried about. You know, I'll do anything I can to help. Tell that to Dee, too. Oh, oh thank you. Let me ask you a straight question. Don't tell me, Do you think the jury believes Dee? They did. But right now, I think they're reevaluating your testimony. You think John might be acquitted? Oh, Lila. He may get off because of me. Oh, don't be ridiculous. If he gets acquitted, it'll be because he's innocent. Not to mention the fact that I'm a terrific lawyer. He's not innocent. Lila, you weren't there. You don't know what happened. I know he raped her. I was at the hospital when she got there. Oh think that when I testified, I might have helped him. Lila, when you're on the witness stand, you're supposed to concern yourself with telling the truth, not with who you're helping or hurting. And if the truth helped John Dixon, then so be it. But I was afraid of him when I testified. I was afraid of what he was going to do, about what he was going to say. That, that influenced what I said. Lila, stop playing yourself. Guilt doesn't help you or anyone. Dee had the courage to press charges against him, and I didn't support her. I mean, look, she's not all that noble. She is trying to send her own husband to jail. That's exactly where he belongs. Lila, has it ever occurred to you that you're not exactly objective in this? I mean, you do hate the man. I know he raped her, and I know him a lot better than you do. He is a vengeful human being. He gets crazy when he's jealous. When I was seeing him in Chicago, it... What? I tried to break off with him once. Because I had met somebody else. And he just couldn't accept that. He thought I was his personal property. He made life hell for me and, and everyone I was involved with. So he's not a nice guy. It doesn't make him a rapist. Oh, Maggie, I could tell you other things. Well, go ahead. When I first moved here, before Dee and, and John were married, he came to my house once, one night. He had been drinking. And he was very upset because he had an argument with Dee. Well, what happened? He was just so angry because he thought that she had rejected him and I was alone in the house and he decided he wanted me Lila what are you saying are you saying that John Dixon raped you no but only because I fought with him I literally fought with him I could feel his anger I am telling you something Maggie it was terrifying and I am sure that something like that happened with Dee. I know that she was trying to leave him. And he just can't accept that. He thinks he has a right over her. Whether it doesn't matter what she feels, anything. He's just so sick. I'm sure he forced her. I'm just sure of it. Oh, yes. You know, um... She's resting comfortably, but she's not allowed any visitors. Well, you could call Dr. Groverman at his office and ask, and then if it's okay, I... Sure. All right, goodbye, Mrs. Janet. Hmm. 
Hmm. You get Miss Wilson back to the room, all right? Followed your orders to a T, Dr. Dixon. Uh, I have... Uh, I've reevaluated uh, Mrs. McCauley's medication here, you see. I would like to... Uh, Well, I'd like to cut it down to 25 milligrams for uh, at night, you know? And what about the morning? Well, the morning can... Uh, daytime can stay the same. That'd be all right. All right. Is that all? Yeah, I, I suppose. Yeah, that, that, uh, that would be fine. That's fine. As soon as we finish going shopping, go see now. Doreen. This is pretty. Oh. <laughs> it ought to be. This dress is a classic. You can wear it for years. Uh, well, actually, I was thinking of something a little more... Showier? Well, not showier, exactly. Maybe a, a little brighter. Uh, that's kind of subdued. <laughs> yes, it is. Mommy, can I go in the elevator? <sighs> no, honey. Listen, the elevator is not to play with. Oh, my well, What about this? It's very young, very bright. Uh, yeah, I'll say. Oh, no. Oh, I think it'll be Please, all right. Mommy. Well, um... Yeah, okay, I tell you what. You go down the elevator, but just go to the first floor and then back again. Make sure you don't get in anybody's way. Now, not everyone can wear this color. I think it would be very becoming on me. Well, no, it certainly isn't dull, is it? I might as well try it on. Right this way. Lila, what are you telling me all this for? Because I think you ought to know what kind of a man you're defending. Fine. So you've told me something about John Dixon that I didn't know. The thing is, it doesn't make a bit of difference. What? A man is being tried for rape and assault, and I told you he forced himself upon me not long ago, and you tell me it doesn't make a difference? The thing is, he didn't force himself on you. He tried? Lila, how many men do you think there are walking around out there who tried to get physical with a woman? It doesn't constitute rape. If it did, we'd be arresting half the population. He's guilty, Maggie. Lila, when are you going to understand my position in this? John Dixon, like everyone else, is entitled to a fair trial. I am his lawyer. I took the case. I have an obligation to defend him. You took the case without not knowing all the facts. So what? How much do you think Tom Hughes knew when he went to work for the district attorney? Tell you something, Thomas found out plenty he didn't know about D. Dixon. Okay, so I found out a few things about John. That does not change the fact that I have an obligation to defend him. Maggie! Look, Lila, do you just do you just want me to walk out on him? I'm telling you, he's guilty, Maggie. Yes, I 